I looked outside, I ran downstairs, I was like, put my bikini on, I was like, straight away outside, tanning oil. <sighs> Hard life, isn't it? Hard life. Them days off, though, innit? <laughs> What's he doing? Mm. <laughs> What's going on guys, so today we did shoulders and arms. Started off with heavy dumbbell press, big compound move. One of the things that I want to tell you to do with this is keep your back pushed in, the lower back pushed in on the bench. Just because when you start to let your lower back come off the bench, especially when you go heavier and you start to tilt your chest up, you're bringing in a lot of upper pec. Now for someone like me where my chest lags, then I don't mind doing that. But if you really want to target your shoulders and you think shoulders are a weak point, maybe go a little bit lighter but keep your back pushed in so you can really target your anterior delt. We then went on to raises. Um, the one thing you'll notice with these raises is I'm leaning forward a little bit. This just puts a little bit, little bit more strain on the medial delt. I'm going thumbless grip, so that just helps removing the forearms. And you'll see that I don't come any closer to my body than about a 30 degree angle. Now that's just because supraspinatus up here does the first 30 degrees. So if you wanna keep constant tension on the delt, then don't come any closer than 30 degrees and then come back up. And we did that straight into a row. So obviously the length of the lever shortens and so you can just overload the deltoids a little bit more and it brings in a little bit of bicep. And today we were doing shoulders and arms, so it's okay to bring in a bit of bicep. We then we did that for about five sets and obviously that's a hundred reps so that's quite high volume on the shoulders and then we went on to do some rear delt flies pretty simple move but you always have to hit your rear delts because you don't want an overloaded front shoulder leaves you at risk of things like impingement which you don't want to do because that will leave you out for a good while uh, we then went on to just do some um, supinated bicep curls just with a weight in each hand just because sometimes when you use a straight bar one bicep is going to do a little bit more than the other we are right-handed or left-handed dominant and if some of you are ambidextrous then that is really really good for you <laughs> but yeah you can overuse one bicep more than the other so if you do them with your dumbbells you, you have no kind of ability of favoring one side than the other and just with this keep your elbows forward guys okay so keep your elbows forward puts your bicep in a better position puts more strain on it you won't be good we won't be able to go as heavy but we're not weight lifters we are building a body and hitting the muscle hard and then we just finished off with some tricep uh push downs tricep rope extensions just to hit the triceps and finish them off uh anyway on the screen now is my current condition i'm feeling good i'm at 91 kilos feeling pretty lean for 91 kilos to be honest but i've always been lean you know I've always 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 been lean so I'm just lucky genetically and yeah that would be the end of this car commentary I hope you enjoyed this quick voiceover and now to get on with the rest of this sunny 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 day let's go I'm really not used to wearing glasses I never really wore glasses before just because I don't think really think they fit my head I've got a very square head and uh, glasses don't really suit me but these ones are phase they're £1.50 and they're pretty nice. So uh, we're both rocking them. Whoa! <laughs> Currently sat on a beanbag. Post-workout food, picked up two lots of poached egg on toast, a water, and a Diet Coke. That's the definition of food porn right there. I'm loving it. Get <laughs> my face, bro. Get out my face, bro. <laughs> What's going on, guys? So we are now in the Duke. Stanard is finishing off his burger. And I have a little bit of time, so I'm going to answer the questions from the drive through it Q and A. Question one is how long have you been training and doing YouTube? So I've been training practically my whole life, but specifically for physique, 
about a year and a half now. So that's taking nutrition seriously, that's taking my training seriously, and how long have we been doing YouTube? We've had a YouTube account for about two years, but making videos like this, maybe two, three months tops. Next question. How long have I been training clients in my gym? I started in February, so that's been about three or four months now. I trained as a physical therapist, or as we say over here, physiotherapist, and then went into personal training. So that was my route into personal training. So I have a little bit more in-depth knowledge, I guess, or just come from a different route. So about three or four months in my studio. I'm doing a Q&A, do you wanna get in? Do you wanna stick your head in? Okay, so what do you think of apps like MyFitnessPal for someone looking to lose weight? I think MyFitnessPal is a great app. I think it can take up a lot of your time and take over your life, so I don't really use it. I used it for the full day of eating video, the last video, but I don't use it myself. I just go around clean eating and just go in a lot of feel. But for some people that maybe don't know their portion sizes or are just getting into it or maybe don't understand the science, then MyFitnessPal is a great way to help you lose weight. I think it's a, I think it's a great app. What is your take on clean eating versus if it fits your macros? I think they're practically the same thing. I think clean eating, I think if it fits your macros, you should be clean eating. <laughs> and I think in general, you should be clean eating it anyway. I think if it fits your macros, it's just a good way to track, but I personally don't do it. I go up clean eating. How often should you train a body part? Okay, so if you hit chest, I would leave it at least 48 to 72 hours because that's how long it takes for the muscle fibers to recover. So then you can hit it again. Although there is a new style of training that's coming out, which I might give it a go, which is you train the same muscle part two days in a row. But it is, you go heavy on the first day and then you do pump work on the second day. And that's just because your muscle's sore and then you can overload it again. And because it's sore, you get a better feel and more mind-muscle connection. So for a body part, say like back, where people struggle to get a mind-muscle connection, maybe go for a heavy day followed by a pump day and see if that helps. Do you got, do you guys ever do upper body or even abs on the same day as legs? No. Legs is one of those body parts which I just push myself until I'm literally dead. And after I've done legs, so it's a good hour, hour and quarter session, I do not want to train anything else. So I don't train anything else, abs or legs, or abs or arms or anything like that on leg day. That's the questions. And if you do have any questions in the future, diet, training, just about us. Doesn't even have to be about anything fitness. Then just drop it below and we'll always try and answer it. Oh, it's recording. <laughs> you swear.